Hey everyone, Canadian Rod 705 here. Um, today I'm doing a video on how to push start your Indian Scout. Um, and the reason I started this channel uh, is because if I was looking for information that I personally, you know, found interesting um, or something I wanted to research, and I found a hard time finding uh, information quickly, or if it was uh, conflicting with other things people had said, um, I thought, well, maybe I should do a video, uh, at least that's sort of specific to the Scout once I learned how to, you know, what the information was that I wanted. Uh, in relation to it. So that's why I'm doing this video. Now if you go to search on how to do this, you'll find a lot of information online. Um, there's a lot of articles and there's some videos how to push start your motorcycle. The majority of them um, give you one really wrong tip that will not work on the Indian Scout, um, which I'll get into. And uh, they tend to show it on different bikes, um, people doing it, and different bikes uh, tend to start easier at different speeds when you're trying to do this. Now if you've never done this before, uh, I strongly recommend you practice it while your bike's running well because when you need to do it uh, and you got a situation where your bike won't start up, um, you don't want to be doing it for the first time. Let's just put it that way. You want to already have the experience and be confident enough to try doing it. So what a push start is, or when you pop the clutch, is your bike is in gear um, but you're holding the clutch so that the transmission's disengaged. It's like you're in neutral. Um, and then you start rolling the bike and you quickly let go of the clutch. And what happens is the power from the tire makes the engine spin um, and then the engine will fire up on you. It's a way of getting around having a, like a faulty starter uh, or not having enough power to get your starter to go. And then once your bike's already running, uh, the stator in the bike, which is like a car's alternator, charges the battery and runs the electronics. Uh, and runs uh, the spark plugs and everything that you need, your fuel injection system. Um, so your bike will just run fine after that point, even if you can't get it to start normally. And that's why it's done. So I just had to do, I was trying to do this a few days ago. I wasn't successful. Um, and it was because I didn't have enough information and I hadn't practiced it ahead of time. And also I didn't have a, a good area to do it in. Um, but my battery tender cable had died. Uh, the fuse on it was blown and I didn't realize that. Um, so it sat in storage for quite a while and then when I went to go start it the battery was down around 12 volts um, It didn't fire up on the very first Start and then after that I didn't have enough juice to get the starter to Engage so it was a bit of a problem. I've had a lot of discussions about this Everybody's first question is well, did you try bump starting it? Did you try popping the clutch? Did you try push starting it? Um, and I said, you know, I did but blah 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 and I can't get it to work and anyways, I finally figured out um, <laughs> Why it didn't work? So on the Indian Scout and on newer motorcycles um, with a, a high compression engine, uh, you know, a really powerful, strong engine, um, the problem is, is that if you put it in first gear, um, which allows you to sort of move slowly and get the engine to start on an older bike, the compression is so high that the tire will just lock up and the engine won't turn. It's just you need too much force to get that engine to turn in first gear. Um, so because of that, this is actually a little bit harder on the Scout, you need to do it in second or third gear. And because of that, you can't do it really at a super slow speed. You gotta be rolling pretty good. Rolling enough that I don't believe you could push the bike yourself on flat ground and get it to work. You kinda need to be on a hill. Um, and so I'm showing you how to do this on this. I got a big, steep, long hill here. There's only really some really specific circumstances where you would be trying this and you kind of have to have access to a hill uh, to go down. And if you don't get it right, uh, then you're stuck at the bottom of the hill. And I don't know if you want to push 550 pounds all the way back up and try it a second time. So that's why I say if you have a bike in good working order and you've never done this before, uh, you should practice it. Practice it while you can and then you can drive back up the hill and, and do it enough that you feel confident. Um, first off, that you'll stay on the bike if the tire locks up. Uh, and confident that it will actually work. It will work, but you want to know pretty much, you know, where the sweet spot is in terms of speed um, and uh, And you know keep in mind things like if you're going down the hill and you go to pop the clutch and the tire locks up You know or don't do it somewhere where you have to do a major turn or something like that You only want to do it on this the straight parts um, But the more you practice it the quicker you can do it uh, because there it is a bit of an art um, and then then when you're in a jam you got an issue if you only have a short hill that you can run down hey there's a good chance you might be able to push start that bike and get it going and then that'll get you you know where you need to be to get the battery fixed or 
or maybe the battery's just dead and um, you don't need to do anything to stat or recharge it after it's been running for a while. So anyways, um, yeah, so where I am, I got a big long hill here. Uh, when I did it the last time, uh, I think it did it like four or five times. If you're not an experienced rider, um, don't do this. There's warnings all over the place um, because the bike's gonna uh, potentially, the back tire will skid. And if, if that's gonna freak you out, then you don't wanna do it. But if you're an experienced rider and you're confident that that's not gonna you know throw you off or anything, um, try it out while you can while the bike's working properly don't try not to do it you know the first time when you're in an emergency situation and you got to get that bike going okay so step one the key in your bike needs to be turned to the on position the run switch on the right handle grip needs to be turned to the on position as well don't accidentally leave it in the kill position if that's how you shut the bike off last time and you need enough power that when you turn that switch on you hear the fuel injector engage it's that signature noise everybody knows when they start up their Indian uh, right before the engine fires up and you want to make sure that you at least hear that because you need your fuel injector to have some juice to get gas into the engine so this will work. Next you need to pick the gear that you're going to use. So second gear is the best gear for low speed and when you're in an emergency situation if you don't have a very big hill second gear might be the most appropriate because you won't be able to get the bike to go that fast and you want it to fire up. However, as you can see, when I go down this hill, which has loose gravel, uh, my back tire locks up repeatedly. I do finally get it to fire in second gear, but my back tire locks up about four or five times before I manage to do it. It's not as easy in second gear. Then I do it in third gear, and when I'm in third gear, I just let the bike roll and it gets going fairly quickly. And then I just pop the clutch and immediately it fires up. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and share on YouTube or wherever.